Mr. President, I uh, rise to talk about a very important amendment that Senator Feinstein and I will be offering to the transportation bill. When we move to consideration, that vote to move to consideration may be around 2 a.m. and then the clock will tick, but at some point on Sunday, uh, I I'm hoping that we will begin the process of considering amendments and uh, chief among them should be the Feinstein-Wicker amendment to the bill regarding truck length increases. Our amendment would authorize the Secretary of Transportation to require a truck size and weight study before promulgating a rule to increase the minimum length limitation for trucks. Now, I showed to my colleagues, and I showed to you, Mr. President, a poster. The, what I am showing you is a picture a drawing of what we call twin 33s. Here's the tractor trailer. Here's a 33-foot trailer. And here's another 33-foot trailer tacked onto the back of that. So twin 33s, long trucks, longer than is allowed in 39 states. So far, we've let the states make the decision about whether to accept these. and. And some 39 of our federal states have decided, no, uh, we don't want trucks this long with the twin 33 trailers on them in our states. Our amendment would accept that decision on the part of the states. Our decision would allow those 39 states to continue to make that decision, and of course the states that want trucks that long, they can, they can make that decision themselves. Why are we having to offer such an amendment on this highway and transportation bill? Because the Appropriations Committee, uh, by a very close margin of some 16 yeses and 14 noes, has decided otherwise. And unless we act as a Senate, uh, that legislation on the appropriation side of things will go forward and will become the law of the land, telling 39 states that they can't make their own decisions on twin 33s. And so uh, we, we would uh, 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 we would allow the states to continue to make this decision while the Secretary of Transportation uh, promulgates a full rule to increase the minimum length limitation. Now, um, I will tell you that a preliminary information from the U.S. Department of Transportation indicates that we don't need to, to go to mandatory twin 33s. U.S. Department of Transportation has concluded there should, should be no change to the current maximum truck length limits allowed on federal highways. Uh, their preliminary report goes on to say the department finds that the current data limitations are so profound that no changes in the relevant laws and regulations should be considered until these data limitations are overcome. So that's the counsel of the U.S. Department of Transportation. Now, I will say I'm not always bound by what the federal Departments say, as a matter of fact, uh, again, I would stress that decisions are better made by the states and state legislators and governors and transportation commissions. But I do think it's instructive that even these people at the federal level are, are counseling against this idea of a federal mandate to all 50 states that they must, uh, that they must move to to the twin 33s. Now, um, so that's, that's U.S. Department of Transportation. Why is Roger Wicker from Mississippi down here advocating for federalism and advocating for states making their own decisions? They're basically advocating for, uh, against a federal mandate for these long trucks. I'll tell you, I started hearing from folks. When this issue came before the Appropriations Committee, a group of people rose up and, and said, 
What are you doing? What are you thinking? Mandating this to, uh, to all 50 states without their consent. So who is, who is for the Feinstein Wicker Amendment and opposed to mandatory twin 33 trucks in, every, in all of our states? I'll tell you who's opposed to it. Advocates for highway and auto safety. Triple A. Know a little something about getting around this United States of America. Triple A is for the Feinstein Wicker Amendment. The National Troopers Coalition. Know a little something about safety on the highways. They are opposed to mandatory twin 33s. I'll also tell you, Mr. President, it's very interesting that the Mississippi Trucking Association, you'd think every trucker would want to be for this, make more money, get to haul more stuff. Mississippi Truckers Association contacted our Mississippi delegation and said, we don't want this. Senator Wicker, other members of the Senate and House oppose this federal mandate that is uh, about to come out of the Appropriations Committee and pass the Feinstein and Wicker Amendment. The Mississippi Trucking Association is for our amendment and against twin 33s, along with a host of other trucking associations from east to west to north to south. I'll tell you who else is opposed to mandatory twin 33s, the Mississippi Sheriff's Association and a host of other state sheriff's associations. The Mississippi Association of Chiefs of Police and a host of other state associations of chiefs of police. Did I mention that the Illinois State Senate unanimously passed a resolution in support of what the Feinstein-Wicker Amendment would do and opposed to mandatory twin 33s. Illinois State Senate unanimously passed this resolution saying to the Congress, leave it up to the state of Illinois. We know what's best for our state when it comes to infrastructure. We know what's best for our state when it comes to the safety of our citizens. And so it's people like that. The Mississippi Department of, uh, the Mississippi Transportation Commission, MDOT, has passed a unanimous resolution asking us to oppose twin 33s on a mandatory basis. Why are people so opposed to these? Haul a lot more. Obviously, some people would make a lot more money if they can have this much um, area in their trailers to haul things. So why are people opposed to it? Well, they're concerned about, for one thing, about wear and tear on our nation's infrastructure. Now, we're going to pass a bill, I hope, in, in a few days, send it over to the House. We hope we get it sent to the President on a bipartisan basis, and we want to build some more highways. We want to strengthen our bridges, and everyone within the sound of my voice knows we need to do that. It's a question of how to come up with the money, but the last thing we need to do is authorize something, not authorize, mandate something, mandate something, that is going to cause more wear and tear and to an extent that 39 states don't want to do it. Uh, so we, because of the wear and tear, also uh, estimates are that this forced mandate, if it comes from Washington, D.C., if the Feinstein-Wicker Amendment or something like it doesn't pass, going to cost $1.2 billion to $1.8 billion per year in additional funding because of the pavement damage. It just doesn't stand to reason that you can mandate this sort of additional truck length on the highways without more damage to the highways. Uh, it makes sense and we have statistics to prove it. Also, it's a matter of, of public safety. You know, I'll tell you, not every interstate in uh, my state of Mississippi is exactly straight and narrow. We've got some hills and we've got some places where the curves are um, less desirable than I would like them to be. We're told that stopping distances are going to increase if we mandate this sort of thing on the, on the 50 states. Longer stopping distances for double 33s than the truck configuration we currently have on the roads in the United States of America. 
The double 33 trailers in some studies took 22 feet longer to stop than the current double 28s with normal operating brakes. You know, I've got four grandchildren in Mississippi. I got two daughters with small children, two sons-in-laws in, two sons-in-law in Mississippi, and they're driving up and down these highways. I just assume they not have to compete on the roads, on those curves, on, on Waterworks Curve in Jackson, Mississippi. I'd rather my three grandchildren not be in a van with a twin 33 trying to pass them. I just don't think it's safe for my children and my grandchildren. And the state governments in 39 states apparently agree. If they decide they disagree, they, um, they have that right. Also, I think that Senator Feinstein and I, with our amendment, are standing up for small business. You know who can afford a twin 33 tractor trailer rig, double 33s? It's the big guys, the big companies. You know their names. They can afford to do this. And certainly one can understand why they would think it would be better for their business. But I'll tell you, there's a reason why the Mississippi Trucking Association is opposed to this. They don't have the money to convert to a bunch of twin 33 double trailers. They'd rather not do this. As a matter of fact, this federal mandate, if Congress decides to do this, and I, I certainly hope we don't, I hope we don't think we're so smart that we can mandate this on 50 states, but if we do this, we're going to put some small truckers out of business. That's why the Mississippi Trucking Association passed a resolution. That's why they have contacted me. And I'll tell you this, Mr. President, the American Trucking Association says they're they're for these twin 33s, but, but individual members of the ATA, the American Trucking Association, have come up to me and said, thank you, Senator Wicker, for standing up for our interests, because we're small business, and we can't afford to get in this, in this competition, and it will run us out of business to have to go out and make the capital investment. I would also make an argument just in the name of federalism. There's a reason we have 50 states. And you know, my Republican Party won, a, won an election in November, and we won control of this body. And, and one of the things we have said as Republicans is we don't think all the wisdom resides here in Washington, D.C. We don't like a lot of federal mandates. We like states making decisions. We made a bold statement, Mr. President, last week that states should make their own decisions and school boards locally should make their own decisions with regard to education. I voted for that. I applaud that. It didn't go as far as perhaps uh, many of us on this side wanted, but we made a strong statement that we wouldn't have a national education school board policy. We'd move the decision making more back to the states. Why on earth? A week and a half or two weeks later, would we make a decision that here in Washington, D.C., we know more about how to take care of infrastructure. We know more about truck lengths. We know more about safety for our children and grandchildren here in Washington, D.C., than the state legislatures do. I just don't think, I don't think we will do that. And so I, I urge my colleagues during this time when, when we have some time to debate, um, get down to the floor. Let's talk about this issue. We'll, we'll be standing in um, quorum calls and recesses subject to the call of the chair, perhaps for most of this weekend. We have time to debate this issue. And for the few moments that it takes Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or whatever to actually vote on this, we're entitled to a, to a vote. Mr. President, on this germane amendment. It is germane. It's not something extraneous dealing with social issues or uh, Planned Parenthood or any number of, of, uh, of uh, non-germane issues that I'm sympathetic with. This is a transportation issue. It is germane to the bill. 
The Senate needs to work its will on this issue. It needs to go over the House, and they need to work their will. I think once we think about this, Mr. President, I would say to you and I would say to my colleagues, I think we'll make the decision that we ought to leave this issue up to the states. There's a reason 39 states don't want to do this in their considered opinion. We ought to respect that decision. We ought to do it in the name of federalism, in the name of the states having the right to do things a little differently in each state if they want to, in the name of safety, in the name of infrastructure, and in the name of fairness. So I would, uh, I would thank Senator Feinstein for joining with me on this bipartisan amendment, and I would urge my colleagues, when the time comes, when, uh, when the brief debate on the floor has occurred on this issue, to vote yes in favor of the Feinstein-Wicker Amendment. Thank you, Mr. President, and I uh, yield the floor to my friend.